rates from other companies, even if they're lower than ours, so you can choose what's best for your family. Comparing rates used to be a hard day's work, but not with AutoQuote Explorer. Need me to help again? No. So join us and taste why Progressive is the name people trust. Sorry, are we talking about apples now or insurance? <laughs> <laughs> why is that funny? A chance to come into the box and show the world what they can do. Along with our producer, Alondra Villarreal and Tiger champion Doug Thompson, I'm Chris Blair. Happy you could join us on the LSU Sports Radio Network and on the SEC Network Plus. And Doug, you know much better than I that when these games come in, you got to be ready. You're going to get the best shot from the Cowboys. And it's one of those that when the schedule comes out, they will circle indeed when they're coming to play at the box. It's it's one of the things they look forward to the most. A lot of these guys were overlooked. A lot, most, a lot of these guys wanted to play for LSU their whole life. So um, it's a special night for a lot of people to be able to see them play on this field because it's such a, a special place in Louisiana. Blake Money gets the start tonight. Braden Juhan to lead it off in the first pitch for Money. Foul down the line into the seats in left. Time of first pitch, 632, and we are underway. Game time weather report brought to you by AccuTip. Again, another warm day here in the capital city. First the 0-1 to Duhan. A strike at the letters. Money gets ahead, nothing and two. Again, we had some clouds move around and nearby campus, but not much to show for it. 82 degrees currently. Again, partly sunny skies as we head towards the yep. sunset. There's a called strike three at the belt, and Blake Money can't start much better than that. Nope. Three pitches, and he gets his first Super One Food strikeout. One away here in the top of the first inning. Jay Johnson telling us that Blake Money going to go a little bit, see if they can get some distance out of him. Again, he's had a couple of good outings here over the last couple of times out on the mound, looking to continue that here. Not a bad way to start it. And we'll now see Peyton Harden, the center fielder, another left-hander at the plate. And there's a strike at the belt, and it's 0-1. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an open audition for that third starting role, really. I mean, it always it has been since opening weekend when you think about it. Harden awaits, and the 0-1. Misses high and outside, and that'll make it one ball and one strike. The fastball's up there 94, 95 miles an hour so far from Blake Money. Harden, part of the preseason All Southland team, first team selection. There's a breaking ball from Money, make it one and two. Actually led the Southland Conference last year, both batting average and hits. Batted 378 for the season, finished with 85 hits in 2022, his redshirt junior year. Behind in the count here, Money fires the one two, and it's fouled back into the screen. Keeps the count one ball, two strikes. Lazo behind the plate. Money ready to fire. The one two just reaches out with a soft swing to second base. Mishandled initially by Dugas, but the throw gets over to Travinsky in time for out number two. I think they might should. It's close. Yeah. I, I probably want to review that one. And we have that this game, right? Still video reviews. That was close. I I mean, I'm glad it was called an out. Don't get me wrong, but that little bobble cost Dugas some time and mm, close, close. So with two down, top of the first, Josh Leslie comes to the plate. First right-hander Money will face, and the pitch a little too far inside. It's 1-0 with the breaking ball. Leslie, a senior. A lot of seniors in this lineup, as Jay Johnson mentioned. This McNeese team, very veteran. The 1-0. Again, off speed, this time caught the inside corner, evens it up one and one, as he put it. They're an old team in the best way possible. Yeah. There's five seniors in the starting lineup, and that starting pitcher is also a senior. Two outs, the 1-1. One, one. Little chopper has to wait on the high chop. Thompson fields it at short. Tough throw to first. Travinsky cannot glove it. Hit him in the glove, but pops out. So. Yeah, that was going to be a tough play all the way around. I didn't really expect Thompson to be able to get rid of it that quick, and he did, and I think the throw actually beat the runner. But as you said, partner just popped right in and out. That high chop, though, put Thompson in a spot. Mm. Travinsky getting the start at first base tonight. Of course, had been platooning with Malazzo behind the plate. So we're going to give that an E3. 
Yep. So with the runner on, money going to toss over to keep an eye on Leslie, who got the get aboard with two outs after money off to a great start. He'll try to put that behind him, put that miscue in the rearview mirror, and go after Obergon the third, the DH for the Cowboys, another left-hander in this lineup. Here's a chopper this time towards the first baseman. Travinsky takes it on the small hop. He will glove it, step on the bag unassisted for out number three. No runs, no hits. One air by the Tigers and one man left on. We're scoreless after a half inning. LSU coming to the plate for the first time tonight. Dugas, Morgan, and Cruz. When we continue, this is Fighting Tiger Baseball. Good start for Blake Money on the mound. One costly error on Travinsky at first, otherwise very clean inning, but it's scoreless. We head to the bottom of the first inning. Leading things off will be Gavin Dugas, followed by Trey Morgan and Dylan Cruz. Interesting note tonight coming into this game, Todd Politz, who we talk about a lot, kind of the care keeper, if you will, of the records, especially LSU baseball, says that this is game number 4,500 in recorded history of LSU baseball, and he qualifies wow. that because recorded history. He has spent quite a bit of time over the last several months and years, actually, going oh, yeah. back trying to track down every single game played by the Tigers on the diamond. First pitch to Dugas. This is low and inside. It's ball 1-1-0. One, one oh. Gavin on the year batting 3-10. Went five for 13 this past weekend against the Bulldogs in that series loss. There's a strike from Cherry. The fastball at 94, and it's one and one. 4,500 games. Hmm. One one. Just missed the outside corner. I'll make it two balls and one strike. In fact, he solicited some help from Twitter verse today. I'll tell you about it after this 2 1 pitch. A nice breaking ball across the plate. Do guys. Acknowledges that it's two and two. He's looking to know if anybody has details on a game at Texas in May of 1898. Here's a ground ball foul down the third base line, and it's two and two. You so 1998? No, I think that's I, when we played Texas. No, this is 1898. 18, yeah. 130 years they've been playing baseball here. Mm. And and what's uh, pretty cool about that? Let this pitch go. Two two. Two guys swings, pops it up, shallow center field. Coming in and moving over to his left, Peyton Harden. Able to get to it for out number one, and Dugas retired. And as far as, you know, as far as we know, as far as Todd Polich knows, which is about as much info as anyone else has, we're seeing some guys have seasons this year that we've never seen in the history of the program. The rate of which Tommy White is driving in runs and Paul Skeens is striking batters out is unmatched. Trey Morgan stands in the first pitch from Cherry. Fastball, but missed a little low and outside. It's one and oh. Morgan, a 316 hitter on the year. Well, he had a solid weekend both at the plate and certainly in the field. There's a strike to make it one and one. Overall, for the weekend, 
Trey batted 286, went four for 14 with five runs scored. A couple of home runs. There's a strike at the knees, surprises Trey, and it's one and two. Breaking ball from Cherry. Just caught that inner half. One two pitch. Swing and a miss, but the ball got away from Gonzalez. It'll roll all the way to the side wall near the first base dugout, and Morgan will reach safely to first. That's a tough break for Cherry, who's who's got some good stuff right now. And you saw that at bat right there with Trey Morgan. And Dugas had all he could handle as well. Cherry's fastball's in there 93, 94 miles an hour. He's got a good slider. And he's a senior, so there's some there's some battle scars out there too. So Morgan aboard after striking out, but the wild pitch allows him to reach. Now we'll see Dylan Cruz first pitch to Dylan foul a bouncer down the third base line and it's own one. Dylan went three for 11 against the Bulldogs this past weekend but the good news is those three came on Sunday. Cruz awaits Cherry from the stretch fires and a swing and a miss. Oh and two. Not much wind to speak of at the moment here at the box. Sunshine about 75 78 percent of the field at the moment. Here's a swing and another slow bouncer to the third base dugout still 0 and to the count to Dylan. Well, what makes it tough right now is that pitcher's mound half of it's in the sun right about where the pitcher's foot lands is in the shade. So where the ball is released it's bright white. And then it turns to a little bit darker shade of white. The 0 2 fastball just missed inside. Good eye by Cruz. Stayed away. Works the count. One ball, two strikes. I guess what I'm saying is it's hard enough to hit without the shadows. One out. Morgan at first. The 1 2 to Cruz. Ground ball, short hop. It comes off the heel of the glove by Harden. Picked up by Leslie. Out of the air, the shortstop, but he'll have no play. He'll put it in his pocket. Dylan Cruz smokes it down the line at third. Runners now first and second with just one out in the bottom of the first inning. It'll be an interesting decision here on the scorekeeper. I mean, I'm not writing it down yet because I think that could go either way. That ball had a little bit extra gravy on it. And uh, it would have been tough for a lot of third basemen to make that play. Speaking of third baseman, here comes Tommy White. And Cherry will face the RBI leader in the country with runners first and second one out first pitch goes opposite field right center field. Duhon on the run at the track at the wall reaches up can't hold on comes off the wall. Morgan around third he will score Cruz on his way in the throw is there and Dylan will be out at home plate but the Tigers do play to run here is Tommy White again going oppo. <laughs> near just mere feet from getting it over the fence in right center but comes off the top of the wall credited with yet another RBI and the Tigers take a one nothing lead. Yeah I, I don't I've lost count of how many balls Tommy White's hit off the wall in the last three or four games it seems like four or five another ball just scorched out to that right center gap so they will award that 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 an error on Cruz so he'll reach on an E5. We'll see Cade below so the first pitch from Cherry misses low. I don't know about you but I was glad to see Dylan Cruz pull up on that slide. He almost slid in there and that would have been a, a pretty nasty collision. I think everybody agrees with you. Here's the 1 0 swing and a miss off speed. Beloso out in front and it's one yeah, ball I mean, and I, one strike. I just exhaled over here to be able to make that comment because for it did not look good from where we were sitting. The catcher had the ball. Cruz was still eight to ten feet away from home plate. White at second base with two outs and this pitch just off the outside corner make it two and one. So again White picks up the double. Scores Morgan. Cruz of course out at home to record the second out of the inning. Beloso a 2 1 count pitch on its way to the left hander. Here's a bouncing ground ball towards second picked up by Burkell. He will throw a little off the mark but held on to by Braley Hollins 
for out number three. But the Tigers get on the board. One run, one hit, one error committed by the Cowboys, and one man left on. One nothing after an inning of play. LSU leads. Back after this, this is Fighting Tiger Baseball. One nothing LSU leads here on this Tuesday night. Tigers back out on the diamond, top of the second inning, leading things off. Brad Burkell, the second baseman. Another lefty in this lineup is Monty Fires and the 0-1. Miss a tad high, one ball and one strike. Tommy White again delivers double off the wall in right center. Scores Morgan. Yeah. Gives the Tigers a one nothing early lead in this one. The one one. Short of the plate for Money. Two and one. And that gives Tommy 85 RBIs, which I believe ties him for sixth all time with a good buddy of mine, Wes Grisham, who hit 80, had 80, 85 RBIs back in 1989. Money finds the outside corner to make it two and two. Think about that, though. 1989 is the last time a guy had 85 RBIs, and Tommy White's there with some, some meat on the bone in this season. Swing and a miss. Blake Money again with the fastball a little up. It's his Super One Food second strikeout of the game. Good Jay Johnson saying, hey, we're going to let him go if he can record out, stay efficient. So far, so good. One away with Burkell retired. That brings up Brayley Hollins, the first baseman. The young guy in this lineup, the freshman, though, batting 340 on the year. Bats from the right side, tries to catch on a fastball from money. Can't do so, and it's 0-1. Infield playing straight up here to the right-handed hitter. 54th plate appearance of the year for the freshman. Breaking ball in the outside corner and money dealing. It's 0-2. Yeah, I see you out there, Blake Money. Ready to work. The 0-2. Outside, hard breaking ball. Plated or blocked up, I should say, by Malazzo. A non-ball. That's what Coach Burtman used to call the pitch. It's not close to what you're trying to do. There's nice pitch a swing there. and a miss. Chase went a little off the plate. Did Hollins. And just like that, back to back punch outs. Third strikeout of the night, two gone. And now we'll see Cooper Hex, the left fielder, a junior hitting 275. Again, Jay Johnson said it repeatedly yesterday, last night, again today before the game. Keeping leadoff men. Off base against the team like McNeese is key. Again, they can change a lot of things once they get on there. They use their speed. One of the top base stealing teams in the Southland Conference is that pitch missed outside, and it's 1 0. Hex the left hander swings, chases this one, comes up empty. One ball, one strike. McNeese. 110 stolen bases on the year. There's the 1 1. 
Ground ball and a base hit. Bounces by Travinsky, makes its way into right field. Wide turn taken by Hex, but he'll put on the brakes, head back to first with a two out single. In the first inning, two outs for money, and then an error allowed a runner aboard. This time, two outs by way of strikeout. And then just a solid base hit off the bat of Hex gets a runner aboard. Yeah, the, the two things that'll really make things easier for you as a pitcher is one, try to get that leadoff runner out, have at least an out. And two, try to get ahead with your with your uh, first or second pitch. Throw over to keep an eye on the hex. He's back safely. Hex 12 of 13 in stolen bases. Money's pitched to the right-hander. Ground ball towards third. The short hop gets away from Tommy White. Glove by Thompson. He will try to fire over to first, but. Could not get the speedy Darden down the line. So tough short hop on White. Went straight up off of his glove. Thompson made a valiant effort. They're going to give that another error on the Tiger defense. This one be on Tommy White. And I think he would agree that he probably should have made that play. Time called. Two outs, runners first and second here with LSU leading one nothing. But the meeting out on the mound here is the infield along with Blake Money and Malazzo. Yeah, it's just a talk because uh, that one down in the bullpen. A reminder to get low rate, long term financing right now on powerful Kubota tractors, mowers, and utility vehicles. Visit LSU Kubota Dealers.com for your nearest Kubota dealer. Test drive a Kubota today. So after two strikeouts, McNeese with a base hit to right, an error on White at third base, runners first and second, down a run, one nothing. And the bottom of the order, Andrew Gonzalez to the plate, batting 223. Pitch to the right hander misses high ball one. Hext with the single stands down at second Darden on the air is at first base. A 1 0 pitch. And a miss not by much but it makes it 2 and 0. It's starting off with a couple breaking balls to the nine hole hitter. Hitting 223 I don't know. I like that 94 mile an hour fastball. 2 0 delivery. Swing and a miss. Well, that one at 93 did the trick. 2 and 1. Runners take their lead first and second. Money looks in. Looks back to second one more time. Now from the stretch, the 2 1 hit foul into the screen above the first base dugout. That'll even the count now. Two balls, two strikes. Now you have to execute this pitch. Two on, two out, the 2 2 on just outside. Now a speed pitch leaning in was Gonzalez but not willing to chase it'll fill the count three and two non ball means non competitive pitch it's a pitch that right right there he's trying to throw that exact pitch but right behind home plate over the plate just falling into the dirt but that one started on the outside corner and ended in the left handed batter's box. So now a payoff pitch runners go and this one fouled back into the screen by Gonzalez this is the 16th appearance on the year for money again his second start. Mentioned he's had a couple of good outings here of late. Pitched pretty well on Sunday against Mississippi State. Only yeah, pitched an in, inning in a third. If there was any pitcher, I, I would have thought maybe he pulled a little too soon. I think it might have been Blake Money, for me at least, in that Sunday game. Payoff pitch, breaking ball misses down and away. And the number nine hitter Gonzalez will earn the walk. That's going to load the bases now with two outs, and it gets the Cowboys back to the top of the order. And Braden Duhon. And all, and all four sliders there on the balls to that nine hole hitter. None of them, none of them close to the uh, strike zone. Money's gone three and two thirds innings twice this year, way back in March. 
against Central Arkansas on the 21st. Went three and two thirds against Northwestern State last week. Two outs, bases loaded. Duhan, little chopper, right of the mound, picked up by Money, and a race to the first, and he wins the race. Duhan out for the third out of the inning. So Money showing the athleticism there. Keeps it a 1 nothing LSU lead as we head to the bottom of the second inning. As McNeese threatens but comes up empty. Tigers will send to the plate Travinsky, Joe Bear, and Thompson, 6, 7, and 8. When we continue, this is Fighting Tiger Baseball. Bottom of the second inning, LSU leading McNeese one to nothing. Hayden Travinsky will lead it off, followed by Braden Bear and Jordan Thompson. Six, seven, and eight facing Derek Cherry for McNeese. Travinsky stands in, batting 436 on the season. Cherry hit by pitch. Brings the pitch inside. Travinsky maybe got a piece of the uniform so immediately home plate umpire Jordan Alvarado says hit by pitch send Hayden down to first base so the leadoff man aboard in quick fashion here to start the bottom of the second. Tigers 111 hit by pitches on the year. Now we'll see Braden Jobert. Jobert went four for ten yeah. had an even 400 this past weekend. Drove in seven runs. First delivery from Cherry misses low. Could certainly be a big factor if the consistency starts to hit for Braden down the stretch here. Oh, yeah. It, it would almost make this lineup, you know, egregious at that point. The 1 0. Did he go around? Alvarado says yes, and it's 1 and 1. Well, you can certainly see just in this lineup tonight. Jared Jones, the freshman who's had a sensational first year here at LSU. Struggling a little bit at the plate, so getting the night off at least up to this point in the starting lineup is this pitch down low and in the dirt, blocked up by the catcher Gonzalez, and it's two and one to Jobert. But you see Braden who's hitting the ball well. We mentioned Hayden Travinsky. Have those guys toward the back of the order with already Dugas, Morgan, Cruz, White. To start things off, 2 1 pitch. Oh, trying to paint that outside corner, just missed those cherry. Now it's 3 and 1. Yeah, I saw Paul Skeens and Tommy White both picked up National Players of the Week honors. I feel like Skeens has won that like 7 of 10 weeks. Runner goes on the 3 1 pitch. It's low and away. Travinsky will get into second, and Joe Bear will walk down to first on the walk. So now LSU with nobody out has runners first and second. Yeah, Tommy White, hard to not give him an award when you go 571 over the weekend, not to mention the action in the midweek, really every week so far this season. And as you mentioned, Paul Skeens 
15 strikeouts against Auburn a week prior and then 13 strikeouts to sheer domination in game one in that 12 to one run rule victory. Showing bunt pulling it back is going to be Thompson pitch misses outside for ball one one and oh and ironically enough Skeens goes a complete game his first of the year with those 13 strikeouts and then Tommy White walks off the Bulldogs in the bottom of the seventh with a yet another home run. Yeah, I was just thinking it's a shame you've got the national players of the week and you don't win the series. Showing bunt again trying to pull back but a pitch on the inside corner will even it up now to Thompson one ball one strike so nobody out runners first and second. First two offerings Thompson trying to lay down the bunt looks back into the dugout Jay Johnson gives him the sign we'll see what he does here. Again squares and this time lays oh, one pot. softly in front of home plate who's going to pick it up. It will be the catcher the throw to first just beats out Thompson. But not by much very close to picking up a bunt for a single that time he does the job moves runners second and third but it was a beauty just caught the baseball laid it softly in front of home plate. Yeah I mean he literally couldn't have placed it there any better and, and what a tremendous play there by Gonzalez who popped out quick immediately took control and threw a BB of a strike down the line and you also have to tip your hat a little bit to Hollins the first baseman because we know that sun is awful right now on that right field side. So that brings LSU to the bottom of the order Alex Malazzo will stand in. Two runners in scoring position with the Tigers already up one nothing. Malazzo batting 333. 70th plate appearance on the season. He shows bunt and this one's going to get away. Didn't make contact. Gonzalez lost it. Travinsky will come in to score. So the Cowboys give the Tigers a run there. Malazzo trying to drag it down the first base line. Didn't make contact and Again, Gonzalez having to slide to his right, just couldn't glove it. And LSU will take advantage, make it 2 0. I feel like we saw that pitch, I don't know, a dozen times a game this weekend on both sides, Mississippi State and LSU. It seems like we saw so many times the catchers make that backhanded Olay pick out of the opposite batter's box. I remember. Specifically, one block that saved the game uh, in the bottom of the ninth. And it was either Saturday or Sunday's game. Joe Bear advances to third, so with just one out. Runner 90 feet away. Milazzo still with the plate. Chance to add to his RBI total of 14 on the year, and he fouls this one out of play right side. Falls behind in the count one and two. Fair to say the catchers for both teams this weekend had their work cut out for them. One out, here's the one two. Chopper towards third, and it will bounce foul. In fact, Hayden Travinsky, Jay Johnson told me last night on his weekly radio show on Sunday, got a little heat sick. And actually, that was the reason he was replaced with Milazzo. Got a little sick. Had a brief fainting spell in the dugout. Here's the one two check swing and down the line it's foul first base side keeps the count one ball two strikes. No that heat and humidity here is real. I mean uh, I can tell you stories back from the, the regionals and when I played with guys having to jump in you know 55 gallon drums of just ice and water in between games uh, guys going into full body cramps in the middle of games. I mean it, it gets real here around this time of year. The one two swung on by Malazzo. It'll find the seats down the line in right. Well, you remember Dakota Jordan, left fielder yeah. for Mississippi State, cramping up, had to leave the game. Actually, I talked to one of their coaches after that series. They had four guys that day that cramped up and had to leave the game, including their starting pitcher. That's why um, Sanjay, or uh, what, what was his name? Sanji or Sanji? San Saint, uh, yes, uh, Sanji uh, Sanja. Uh, that's why he came out of the game because of cramps actually another one fouled over the right side so yeah and their four hole hitter they had to replace him and that ended up being a factor later in the game as well. One ball two strikes to Malazzo Joe Bear down at third Tigers leading two nothing. 
Jerry delivers and another chopper towards the shortstop charges in takes it on the short hop and a nice play by Leslie will get the second out of the inning but easily allowing Joe Bear to score and the Tigers now make it three nothing so Malazzo does the job brings in the run and with two down and the base is clear will be top of the order Gavin Dugas yeah I was just up here bumping my gums but Malazzo was down there battling for his life he fouled off at least three pitches with two strikes and gets the job done to get the Tigers their third run of the game Dugas a fly ball to shallow center field his first time up Jerry will try his hand one more time and a soft ground ball to third taken in by Harden he'll pump he'll throw and in time for out number three but the Tigers play two runs they do it without a hit they leave nobody on we now play two and it's three nothing LSU more coming up this is fighting Tiger baseball. We head to the top of the third inning. LSU leading three nothing. They've got three runs on just one hit, two errors so far. Wow, well, McNeese scoreless on one hit, also with one error. They left four men on, including the bases loaded last time. In the top of the second, first pitch offered up to Harden, a ground ball bouncer to second. Two guys easily comes up throwing, and one pitch, one out here to start the top of the third. This inning brought to you by AccuTemp Services. Don't let AC or heater outages. Keep you on the bench this year. Text home run to 31996. Get your AC system checked today from AccuTemp Services, proud partner of LSU Athletics. That'll bring Josh Leslie to the plate. Got a board on a fielding error by Travinsky at first base back in that first inning. He was left stranded. Fouls this one back into the screen off the pitch for money, and it's 0 and 1. So far, Cherry with the start for McNeese money with the start for LSU nobody is headed to the bullpens just yet so we may see both of these starters for an extended period one ball one strike now the count to Leslie at yeah, 35 pitches not too bad quick ground out to start it off help things out the one one strike at the letters gets him ahead one and two. Strike strikes and more strikes. That's what we called for 25 of them now for Blake money and 36 pitches. The one two breaking ball hung up lifted in the air but on the run Trey Morgan continues where he left off this weekend. Had to come over quite a ways but got a great jump on it followed it in made it look easy it was not and there are two gone. Yeah I don't know if that's where he's going to play at the next level just because of his arm strength but but he is one heck of an athlete and he's playing it really good here over the last week or so. He's made web gym after web gym. He had three diving catches Sunday against Mississippi State. Trey Ober got in the third a left hander showing bunt and he'll lay it down pops it up the third base line it rolls and money picks it up but in Obregon able to get the first bounce and then high off the grass. And speedy down the line will get in safely. 
Bunning for a single with two outs. Yeah, you know, Obergon's got four home runs on the year. We've got the Ted Williams shift on. He's hitting 304. And you, you hear so many people say, why don't they just bunt when they see the shift? Well, there you go, all those people. There's the bunt, and it worked beautifully. And it always would work if, uh, if those lefties would just slap it down there. Brad Burkell now stands in with two outs, a runner on. Burkell, a strikeout victim to money. He's got three on the night. Money fires to the left hander. Yeah. There's a strike at the belt to make it 0 and 1. Got Thompson playing just left of second base, the Tigers shortstop. Two guys a couple of steps on the shallow right field grass at second. The left handed hitter, he swings and fouls it back, and money in the driver's seat, nothing in two. For the most part, Chris, I don't know about what you're seeing, but it seems like. One through nine, they're they're behind on that fastball. Yeah, money's been able to get it by him very consistently so far. We'll see what he offers on the 0-2. It's off speed and it's short of the plate, making one ball, two strikes. Now I'll take that 0-2 pitch. Maybe a little bit too sharp and a little bit too much of a break and, or behind home plate, but much better. Obregon stands at first, a short lead. Two outs and money fires. This one slapped and it's a base hit into right field. Again, too much over the plate, fat of the plate, and Burkell able to find the outfield with two outs now, runners first and second. That's right, you said it. Well, you're learning this pitching thing. One, two, you can't. The golden rule, they, they shouldn't be able to put the barrel on the ball. Maybe foul tip it, maybe hit it weakly to the shortstop, but certainly not. Put the fat part of the bat on it. So Blake Money leaves one right out over the heart. You're going to have to pitch around a little bit of trouble here to get out of the third inning. Similar story. First inning, second inning, now third inning. Two outs, and now runners aboard for McNeese. There's a breaking ball for a strike across the plate. And it's 0 and 1 to Hollins, who was a strikeout victim. His first time up back in the second. Obregon off of second, Burkell off of first. Here is a slap base hit into left field. They're going to wave the runner around, and Obregon will score an RBI single off the bat of Hollins. And McNeese now cuts the lead three to one. So they kept banging on the door, Doug Thompson, with two outs in the first, two outs in the second. They finally break through here in the top of the third with two men on. They get the RBI single. Yeah, and that's just another ball that's left out over the middle of the plate. Blake Money going to have to do some pitching here. It's not about throwing it over the middle of the plate. The, the objective for a pitcher is to just miss the middle of the plate off the outer thirds of the plate and on the edges. That's where it's toughest for the hitters to make contact. Burkell's at third. Hollins, who made the wide turn, comes back to first. May have jammed up his hand a little bit coming back to the bag, but he stays out there as this first pitch missing low to Hext. Hext had a single left stranded back in that second inning. But again, the Cowboys strike with two outs here in the top of the third, making a 3 1 ball game. Money going to turn and throw and back safely is Hollins. Hollins on the year, two for three in stolen bases. A 1 0 pitch hit up the middle line drive and it's a base hit drops in front of Cruz that will score Burkell and now it's a one run game. A couple of RBI singles make it three hits in a row. Overall and it's now 3 2 LSU leads by a run that's going to bring Wes Johnson the pitching coach out of the dugout is. Throwing begins down in the bullpen for yeah. LSU. That's actually four hits in a row and it started with that bunt against the shift going the other way with two outs. Blake Money has been able to retire the first two batters of every inning, but four straight singles here, and it is a one run game. You have Griffin Herring quickly starting to loosen down in the bullpen for the Tigers, and that's just going to be it for the mound visit. Just giving Herring a little bit more time to get loose because at the moment, Chris, Blake Money is not fooling anyone. 46 pitches thrown thus far. Again, had 
Not exactly smooth sailing, but it worked out of some trouble. Minor trouble in the first two innings. Not the case here in the top of the third. That'll bring Darden to the plate. We've got a board on an error on Tommy White back in the second. Pitch delivery misses outside, 1 0. Hollins at second, hexed at first base. The 1 0 pitch misses low from Money. Two balls, no strikes. Mm. Two zero pitch. Here's a ground ball. Thompson diving it short, but it gets by him. Make it five singles in a row, and they will bring Hollins around from second. He will score, and we have a tie game now, three three. It's almost like they have the signs. I mean, it's tough to get five hits in a row if somebody's just out there lobbing it down the middle. Three runs on five hits. Here in the top of the third, McNeese down 3 0. Now they've tied it 3 3. Two outs in the inning. A runner at third, a runner at first. Gonzalez at the plate in the first pitch, a strike at the knees. Gonzalez aboard on a walk in that second inning. But let's see if Blake Money. Comes after him here again, Definitely. batting 223 on the season. Yeah, you want to get him and not go back to the top of the order. 32 strikeouts on the years. This pitch misses outside off speed, and it's one and one. Herring looks to be just about ready. Just tip the cap. Here's the one one. Short of the plate, make it two and one now to Gonzalez. No, well, this is not what Jay Johnson was hoping to see. Three runs, six hits. All three runs and five of those hits coming here in the top of the third with two outs. The two one. Missed high and outside. Three balls, one strike now to Gonzalez, who again earned a walk back in the second. Runners on the corners, the 3 1, swing and a miss. That time a fastball, a little low in the zone. Gonzalez could not find it. That'll fill the count 3 and 2. It's a heck of a cut from a nine hole hitter. But that's how you're supposed to swing in a 3 1 count. Two outs. Tie game 3 3. Runners on the corners, payoff delivery. Gonzalez stays alive, sends this one foul into the seats down the line and right. Jay Johnson is on the top step. Leaving me to only assume that this will be his last batter. The next hitter is a lefty. I'm sure he'll go to Herring. Runner takes off from first. He'll make his way to second without a throw. So moving into scoring position is Darden now. Gonzalez readies the bat. Two outs, runners second and third. A tie game. Payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him to chase the top shelf fastball, chin level. And Money records the strikeout, his fourth of the day. However, McNeese, three runs. They tie the game on five hits. It's now 3 3. Tigers come to the plate in the bottom of the third. Morgan Cruz and White do up. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball.
Radio Network. Tigers took an early lead, 3 0 after two, but McNeese got three of theirs in the top of the third inning. We got a tie game. Trey Morgan going to lead it off. Strikeout victim, but a wild pitch allowed him to reach, and he came around to score back in that first inning. And the first delivery from Derek Cherry, who certainly has to have a little more oh. energy coming into the bottom of the third, and it's 0 1 to Morgan. Watch out. This pitch thrown behind him somehow missed him. It's one and one. <laughs> Must have slipped out of his hand. Really shocked Morgan. You know, normally when the pitch is not, he's not interested and in he spins backward. That time he's lucky he didn't spin far enough. Here's the one one. Big chopper towards second. High hop, but handled by Burkell. Toss over to Hollins in time for out number one. Morgan retired. We'll see Dylan Cruz. We got to score some runs here. How about a more less Cruz hit a shot, called an error to the third baseman, tried to lobby for him there in between the uh, innings. I saw you. I saw you. You but, had valid uh, points, valid yeah, points. I mean, come on, the ball's 100 miles an hour. First pitch to Dillon, strike at the belt. 0 and 1. <laughs> Cherry delivers quickly, whips that one in there for a strike. Fastball at 93 and it's 0 and 2. Dylan yeah. again falls behind early. Yeah, this cherry guy, he's got his stuff's too good to, to let him think there's a chance. The 0 2 gets loose outside in the dirt. One ball, two strikes. I've seen guys exactly like this have outstanding nights. 1 2 pitch. Another high chopper having to wait on it is Harden. He gloves it. The throw is in the dirt, but a nice backhand pick. Falling down is Hollins, but he holds on to record out number two. That was one heck of a play by the first baseman. Hollins had to stretch down the first baseline and then kind of go with the backhand pick. Just not an easy play at all and keep the toe on the bag. Very nice play by the corner infield of McNeese. So we'll see Tommy White. He had a double off the top of the right center field wall to bring in a run as that pitch got loose from Cherry all the way to the backstop and it's one and oh. Seen a lot of chopping ground balls here tonight. Yeah, we have both teams. White did not chop last time. No. Nearly put a hole in the fence. There's a strike on the inside corner to even it up one and one. Leads the team with 18 home runs, has 22 doubles, and as we mentioned, 85 runs batted in. Stays away from this, misses off the outside corner, two and one. Also leads the team in gold chains. Here's the 2 1 delivery. Low and outside. Danger zone time here for yeah, Cherry, is. three and one. Yeah, it is. Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. One batting glove guy. He just goes with the bottom hand and just grabs the dirt with the top hand. 3 1 pitch. Nicely placed by Cherry. The fastball in the outer half. Not much Tommy can do. He stays away and it's now 3 and 2. Payoff delivery to White. Woo. Just missed. Good eye by Tommy and he will earn the walk. Terry again went back to the heater, tried to keep it low in the zone, and just missed. So Tommy White aboard with two down. See if LSU has some two-out magic here in the bottom of the third as Kate Beloso comes to the plate. Yeah, if we're in Lake Charles, I think that one's going to get the ring job, but here at the box, ball four. Beloso grounded out to Burkell, the second baseman. His first time up. And the first pitch off speed, but across the plate, just below the belt, and it's 0 and 1. It appears Griffin Herring will come in in relief as Beloso sends one to right center field. It's going to get down. Harden going to have to give chase. He'll backhand it around second into third is Tommy White. So Beloso with his first hit of the night. And a little two out. Trouble here for Derek Cherry. As Beloso gets his 34th hit of the year. 
Yep, just got one out over the plate and did what good hitters do, hit it right back up the middle on a line. Now batting for the Tigers. Can't ask much more there. Cade Beloso, Tommy White able to get from first to third, and Travinsky with two outs, a chance to drive in a run. Hayden hit by a pitch in the second. See if he gets something to put a bat on here in his second at bat of the night. Cherry delivers and inside just missed him again. It's one and oh. Good to see the Tiger faithful out here on this Tuesday night. Good crowd at the box. A little bit of a breeze. There's a swing and a miss. Stravinsky goes for the fences, but can't find the baseball, and it's one and one. Tie game 3 3. Tigers two outs, runners on the corners. That breaking ball from Cherry just missed. Hayden loaded the bat but stayed away. It's two and one. Two one, swing and a miss. Brought the 93 mile an hour fastball in on the hands. Hayden not able to get around on it. Two and two now the count. White at third, Beloso at first, the 2 2 pitch. In on the hands, popped up down the line in left. With some room, giving it a look, and Cooper Hext has it just beyond the left field bullpen for out number three. The Tigers, no runs, one hit. They lead two men on. We now move to the top of the fourth. We're tied 3 3. Back after this, this is Fighting Tiger Baseball. Top of the fourth inning coming your way from Alec Box Stadium on a Tuesday night. We are all tied 3 3. The Tigers led 3 0 after two. McNeese plating three runs in the top of the third on five straight hits to tie the game up. Leading things off will be top of the order. Braden Duhan, pitch to the left hander as Griffin Herring takes over on the mound. Misses outside on the fastball. It's 1 0. Yeah, for uh, Griffin Herring. This is the 13th appearance or 14th appearance of the year. This pitch just misses low. That'll make it 2 and 0. Oh to do on. He comes in with a 4.35 ERA. He's worked 20 and 2 thirds innings, allowed 22 hits, 10 earned runs. This pitch from Herring misses off the outside corner with a fastball. Now three balls, no strikes. In those 20 innings, he's walked 13. And struck out 26. Opponents are hitting 272. 3 0 pitch. Take is on. There's a strike across the plate. That'll make it 3 and 1.
3 1 pitch. High and inside, ball four. So Herring gives up the walk, the leadoff man aboard. Big no no against a team like McNeese. So Duhan will head down to first base. 16 of 19 in stolen bases this year. We'll see Peyton Harden. Final line for Blake Money. He went three innings, allowed six hits, five in a row. Had three earned runs, a walk, and four strikeouts. Tommy White expecting a possible bunt here. He is well inside the infield grass down the line at third. Harden, the left hander. Herring will fire. He'll square to bunt. Tried to pull it back, but it's a strike nonetheless, and it's 0 1. Harden a couple of ground outs on the night so far to second base tries to bunt pops this one high but back towards the screen. Falls behind in the count 0 and 2. See with an 0 2 count runner at first. Harry now will decide to throw over to first and easily back is Duhon. Duhon, as I mentioned, 16 stolen bases. Harden at the plate. As this pitch just missed outside. One and two, not a bad 0 2 pitch, but didn't get the call. He leads the team, Harden does, 22 of 25 stolen bases. So. This is certainly I'm sure Jay Johnson says this part of the order we want to keep off base. Yeah I mean the top three and number five as well. Little reach out swing to left field Morgan having to backpedal but he uses that great jump and speed to get there. For the out that will keep Duhon at first base. So unable to lay down the bunt and now with one down we'll see Leslie. Leslie aboard on an air on Travinsky back in the first inning. He flied out to Morgan in left field last time in the third inning. Again, McNeese struck for three runs with two outs there in the top of the third inning. First delivery from Herring. A miss low, 1 0. Aaron checks the runner at first. Now the 1 0. Missing outside. Two balls, no strikes. Again, this has been the issue for LSU over the last two weekends, especially out of the bullpen. It's being unable to get ahead early, which then starts to limit what you can do on the offering. Here's a quick sidearm throw over to first, but again, Duhon only a couple of steps off the bag, easily back. Yeah, that's it. I mean, every pitch that you fall behind, you're just painting yourself into a corner. Herring fires, and there's a strike with a fastball in the inner half. And it's two and one. And he's jumping all over the place over there, Duhan at first base. Team with over 100 stolen bases, that's the type of stuff that they're going to do. It's try to disrupt your timing on the mound. A 2 1, swing and a miss. Fastball a little out over the plate. And Leslie couldn't time it out. It's two and two. One down, tie game, 3-3, three, three, runner at first. Duhan continues to dance, and the pitch high and outside. They appeal down to first. They'll say Leslie held back. And another full count. Get the replay here on our monitor. Probably held it back. And now they catch him go. running. Throw from Nobody Travinsky, there. but the short hop throw back to second. Nobody was at home. Duhan got the jump. The throw went to first. And again, a little late reaction. Dugas and Thompson had to scurry to get over there, but Duhan able to slide in safely. So it looked like they may have him in a rundown, but the good jump and the speed. Not sure if it caught LSU off guard. It, it did. I mean, he went first move, and remember, Travinsky's. Not played first much this year, if at all. Just a tough play. There's a swing and a miss. Herring delivers a top shelf fastball. 
Leslie couldn't stay away so Herring records his first strikeout in relief. Two gone here in the top of the fourth. And that's a nice job there by Herring who fell behind in that count two and zero, oh, but was able to climb the ladder to come back and get the out a big out here in the fourth inning. So now we'll see Obregon a right handed hitter. One for two on the night. First delivery swings and fouls it back. So Herring looks back to second. Here's the 0 1 swung on this one a little farther down but catches the screen above the first base dugout. Nothing to two now Herring out in front. LSU will have Joe Bear Thompson and Malazzo as soon as they find the third out. Runner at second tie game 3 3 off speed pitch chopper towards second Dugas waits on the bounce gloves it throws it to first and the Cowboys are done here in the top half of the fourth inning. No runs no hits no errors one man left on we go to the bottom of the fourth tied 3 3 this is fighting Tiger baseball. It off for LSU and a tight game with McNeese here on this Tuesday night. First delivery by Derek Cherry going to miss outside for ball one. Cherry three innings of work giving up two hits three runs all three earned two walks one strikeout. Fastball's been hanging around the low to mid 90s most of the night that pitch missed outside. Suddenly Braden Jobert ahead in the count two balls no strikes he was aboard on a walk. His first time up as this pitch comes inside going to catch him. Another hit batter for LSU. That's 112 on the season. And Joe Bear, the leadoff man aboard for LSU. Send up Jordan Thompson. Now batting for LSU, shortstop Jordan Thompson. Thompson with a sack bunt back in the second inning. Advanced runners to second and third. It was a great bunt, one of the better ones we've seen for LSU this season. 267 hitter on the year. Again, kind of been his sweet spot in the eight hole when you look at his numbers this season. Is Jerry going to hit him with the first pitch offered? Back to back hit batters. That's 113 on the season. And the Tigers haven't had to do much, and they have runners first and second with nobody out. Yeah, they'll start getting the bullpen moving now with a right hander. Try to get a number for you. It's like 36. Looks like JT Moeller down there. Came in out of AM Corpus Christi. He's a junior from San Antonio. We'll have a little mound visit with the team, talk it over, make sure the pitcher is okay, because that was too not even close. He's 
He's at 62 pitches. He's thrown 37 strikes so far. So we'll see Alex Malazzo in the nine hole. Able to bring in a run in that second inning on a ground out to the shortstop Josh Leslie. He's got runners first and second, nobody out. Showing bunt, he'll bring it back and it misses high from Cherry, 1 and 0. Again, squares the bunt, pulls it back, this time a strike at the knees. Fastball from Cherry is in, make it one ball and one strike. The 1 1. The bunt is foul behind him towards the backstop. A lot of Tiger fans asking this week do we expect Georgia to shuffle their weekend rotation later on in Athens, as we saw from Auburn and Mississippi State? Asked Jay Johnson about it last night. He had a very clear and succinct answer. The 1 2 pitch showing bunt, and they will call it a strike. Ooh, Outside corner, certainly letter high. And Jay Johnson normally won't argue balls and strikes, but he's coming out of the dugout just to. Yeah, to talk to Malazzo for yeah. taking the first one and missing the second one. So down on strikes, trying to lay down the bunt, couldn't do so. After two hit batters, you could say McNeese giving it out there. So now Dugas top of the order. 0 for 2 tonight. This is a ground ball towards the third baseman Harden. He will scoop it up, toss to Burkell. The relay to first off. is in time. He'll get the double play and get out of the inning. He's telling him uh, Wanaka over at first base is looking in the dugout saying he pulled his foot. To hold the phone, they're going to bring the umpires together yep. here. Looks they're like LSU is going to challenge it. So finish. What did Jay say when uh, when you talked about the the shuffling well, of the I rotation? Well, I said certainly it's got to be a strategy, and how do you counter that? And his point was, hey, I tell our guys every day. There's 56 games. It's a 56 game playoff, as it were. This year, only 55 games due to the only two game series in South Carolina. He says we say we go and try to win every game, and Paul Skeens is available for the first game of every series. He said I'd be talking out of both sides of my mouth. If I suddenly said, hey, we're going to move it up a little bit to win this series or so on and so forth. So he said, we're going to stick with Paul Skeens. He didn't say that. He just said, I don't see any changes with what we do. We're going to go with our best. Oh, guy. I thought you meant, is Georgia going to shuffle their pitching to throw off, basically? I did. That's what I asked him. Oh, okay. He said, yeah, they may, but we're not changing. Yeah, no, of course. Yeah. The, my answer would be um, they better. <laughs> because. <laughs> This Paul Skeens guy is tough to beat, dude. I mean, I don't know if you've been watching, but he he's he's 98 to 101 from the first pitch until the last pitch. I mean, you're talking about Steven Strasburg type type stuff in, in terms of college baseball. So if I were the Georgia coach, I think I would definitely throw the pitcher with the least chance of winning that weekend period against Paul Skeens. So we go under review here and then going into the monitor room under the dugout. So the but Chris review Elko, brought to you by Acme Oyster House. How soon before the game do you have to declare your starting pitcher? Well, we've seen it move late as when they exchange lineups there at home plate. So it doesn't happen a lot, but it technically can happen. Interesting. So again, we are under review to see if that double play, which was ruled a double play, will stand. That was the ruling on the field. They'll have to have evidence to overturn it. Doug, did you catch in the real replay? Time. I mean, he came off the bag. And well, well wanted, wanted to see it slowed down to see when he had the ball in his hand and came off the bag. Yeah, Mark Winaka immediately. That's who I was looking at because it obviously looked like the first baseman might have pulled his foot. He immediately looked over to Jay Johnson and gave the, the low key. He was safe. Let's review it. And that's why he did it. Now, th his foot did come off the bag, but the ball was in his glove and his foot was on the bag before his foot came off the bag. We'll have the outcome here. He's they will him out. confirm the call. So it is a double play and that'll end it. For the Tigers. So we remain tied 3 3. We now head to the top of the fifth here in the final regular season game at the box. McNeese and LSU all knotted up. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball.
Hoppers. Time now for the Waterburger Fan Challenge. Our contestant tonight is Patrick, who will play the Waterburger Fry Shuffle. There will be three boxes up on the right field board. If Patrick guesses which box has the fries, he will win three Waterburger for himself and his entire row. All right, Patrick, it is time for the Waterburger Fry Shuffle. Keep your eyes on the fries for a chance to win. Here we go. Three boxes up on the board. Which box has the fries? All right, Patrick, is it one, two, or three? He says two. He is correct. All right, Patrick has won free water burger for himself and his entire row. Water burger is proud to serve Tiger fans 24 hours a day. The leadoff hitter for McNeese in the fifth inning, second baseman Brad Burkell. Brad Burkell will lead it off for McNeese. Again, we're tied 3 3. Here on a Tuesday night, Tigers finish up the regular season home game tonight, then travel tomorrow to Athens. Get ready for a Thursday Friday series with Georgia. All important series with the Bulldogs as this pitch from Herring misses high. And it's one ball, one strike to Burkell, who on the night is one for two. Strikeout victim in the second to Money, but part of that five hit. Three run third inning. Here's a bouncing ground ball left to the mound. Herring fields it on the short hop, comes set, now fires the first. Nice. Kravinsky able to hold on to it, stay on the bag for the first out of the inning. What does old Buzzy Heidel say about pitchers not being athletes? I don't know what he's talking it's about. It's a pretty athletic play, if you ask me. At the plate for the Cowboys, first baseman, by everyone involved. Nice pick there by the big guy, Travinsky. So with one away we'll see Braley Hollins who also was part of that hit parade in the third inning had a single with a RBI and also came around to score is that pitch from Herring fastball off the plate and it's one and oh. Jay Johnson wanting to see a quick inning here no doubt as this pitch misses high and outside got loose from Herring it's now two and oh. McNeese kind of pesky in the first three innings couple of outs and then they find runners aboard eventually they broke through there in the top of the third. They've left seven men on base including there in the top of the fourth innings this pitch misses inside and low ball three three and oh. With one down, Hollins awaits the 3 0 pitch. Way upstairs, ball four. Herring will give up his second walk of the night, and with one out, McNeese again will put a runner aboard. Connor Cooper Hext, rather, will come to the plate. Left fielder for the Cowboys. Two for two on the night, a single in the second. A base hit with an RBI in the third. In the Cowboys, three runs, six hits. They've out hit the Tigers by four so far. Herring fires the left hander. A little slow dribbler towards second. Dugas having to come over, backhands it, tosses to do Thompson at second base to get the lead runner for out number two. And that one just kind of moving. Looked like one of those CNI base hits, and Dugas able to get there in time, quickly get it out of the glove to Thompson. Ooh, that was a very close play at second I'm base. Dugas really only had one option. The, the speed of the ball off the bat just didn't allow him to. I didn't think he had a chance to plant and throw to first. So what a great play by the second baseman. That'll bring Taylor Darden to the plate. Single with an RBI in the third. Got a board on an error. On Tommy White back in the second as Herring will throw over to keep an eye on Hex at first base. 12 of 13 in stolen bases on the year. 
Herring's pitch to the right hander misses outside 2 and 0. And the Tigers tonight trouble locating with the breaking pitches had a few early for Blake money. 1 0 pitch missed high and outside now 2 and 0 it's 3 Malazzo. and 0 now. Yeah 3 and 0 Malazzo not going to walk out there. And, and, and that's I mean he's 3 and 0 now to let's see he's faced. Seven eight hitters nine hitters he's been 3 and 0 to. Four of them five of them. So Malazzo takes some time out there. Talks with Harry now will come back. Take his place behind home plate as a right hander. For the Tigers up and throwing in the bullpen. Yeah, that's Dutton. A runner at first two down pitch from Herring. Miss low now moves the count three balls no strikes. I guess it was two and oh. So now he's three and oh. now it's three and oh. <laughs> and another throw over to first and again just a short lead off the bag for Hext. Twilight time here in Baton Rouge. The 3 0. A strike at the letters. Surprises Darden a little bit, but he'll stay put, and it's now 3 and 1. Three one from Herring. Line drive right at Thompson. Lifts the glove. Snags it for out number three. Hit hard off the bat of Darden right at Thompson. And for the Cowboys, no runs, no hits, no errors on the Tigers. One man left on for McNeese. We have played four and a half. Three, three, our score. Tigers will send up two, three, and four. Morgan Cruz and White when we continue. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball. Well, the Tigers took an early lead, but McNeese again coming in with a fight. Down three nothing. They score three in the top of the third. Now we head to the bottom of the fifth inning, tied three three. As LSU will have the two, three, and four hitters due up. Trey Morgan will start it off a strikeout victim. They got aboard on a wild pitch in the first and came around to score a run. Then he grounded out to the second baseman Burkell last time in the third. You said it before the game. In state schools come here and they give you everything that they've got. And you can't let them hang around. If you do, belief starts to get real. It's three to three in the bottom of the fifth. We got to get some runs now. JT Moeller takes over a right hander on the mound for the Cowboys after a really sufficient to say the least start for Derek Cherry. First pitch for Moeller and a swing and a miss. Morgan. Trying to go for the diamond deck there. Unable to find the baseball. Falls behind early in the count. Moeller, the righty, enters with a 4.18 ERA. 
This is his 14th timeout this year. The 0 1 pitch hit in the air, but down the line should find the seats in left, and it will. Out of play, nothing in two to Morgan. In those 13 previous appearances, he had 23 and two thirds innings of work, 18 hits allowed. He's allowed 11 runs. They've all been earned. He has eight walks and 21 strikeouts. So Morgan going to choke up a little bit here. Behind in the count, nothing in two to Moeller, the reliever. Right handed delivers and it misses high. Ball one, one and two. Morgan batting 312 on the season again. Pretty good weekend at the plate. Great weekend in the field. Batted 286. Couple of home runs over the weekend. Here's the one two. Off speed and foul down the line. Catches the screen above the third base dugout. Still one ball, two strikes. Things certainly heating up here in South Louisiana, but remember, whenever you're ready to cool it down, count on Slow Melt Ice, colder, cleaner, and longer lasting since 1997. Check them out at slowmeltice.com. S L O M E L T I C E dot com. One ball, two strikes to Morgan. Setting up outside, Gonzalez to the left handed hitter. The pitch is there. Morgan swings, drives it to left field, and on the run, Cooper Hex to his left. Able to pull up the glove and make the play on a sharply hit ball by Morgan. A little more to the right in the gap, and he's easily got another double. But as it stands, the first out of the inning. So we'll see Dylan Cruz aboard on an air in the first inning, grounded out to the third baseman Taylor Harden last time. Although Doug and I have lobbied our case, we thought it was an infield single for Dylan Cruz. This time he will go to right field on the run is Duhan, and Duhan just able to grab it on the track, just shy of the wall as Cruz launched that one. To right center field, but it results in out number two. Is Duhan pretty good play in the field? Fantastic mustache. Wow, look at that thing. It's like Raleigh Fingers. It's like he's about to rob a bank in, you know, 1912. <laughs> so now with two down, we'll see Tommy White. White had a double with an RBI in the first, a board on a walk left stranded at third in the third. Moeller fires, and the fastball misses outside, 1 0. Oh. Yeah, I don't know if Duhan should have an NIL deal, but his mustache should, that's for sure. That's the best we've seen yet. White awaits right side of the plate. Moeller fires and off speed way out in front, swing and a miss, one and one. Well, that was a healthy swipe at it. I have a feeling when he gets up with two outs and nobody on, there's just one thing he's thinking about. Moeller's 1 1 to the plate. <laughs> swing and a miss. Again, the swing was there. <laughs> just couldn't find the baseball. He falls behind 1 and 2. Yeah, that's some serious bat speed. So he'll take the wide stance with two strikes here. Moeller ahead in the count, one and two with two down. The pitch, another ground ball to third. One hop handled by Harden. He will throw over to first to Hollins in time. And the Tigers go quietly here in the bottom of the fifth. Three up and three down. No runs, no hits, nobody on base. We're still tied 3-3. Three, three. We head to the top of the sixth here at the box. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball. To the Cruz Crew, to Atlas SSI, to Cushman Smith, to the Barnes Academy Cutters, and welcome to the group celebrating the 11th birthday for Gavin. Welcome and thank you for joining us tonight here in Ellen Park Stadium, Skip Bergman Field.
Andrew Gonzalez leads it off for McNeese. We're tied 3-3 as we hit the top of the sixth inning. Griffin Herring continues and the first pitch of fastball to Gonzalez. Inner part of the plate for a strike and it's nothing in one. Gonzalez a walk in the second. Strikeout victim in the third inning. Be Gonzalez top of the order Duhan and Harden do up. Here's a ground ball. Couple of bounces backhanded by Thompson. It's short the throw to first. Plenty of time for out number one, so Gonzalez retired. That'll bring up Braden Duhan. We had this conversation over the weekend, Doug, for those who are tuned in tonight. There are some across college baseball that think LSU has done enough. Their resume is enough. They've got uh, three opportunities beyond tonight in the regular season on the road against a Georgia team that's been up and down. First delivery to Duhan, and it's right back to the mound. Heron, Herring rather, knocked it down, and then it fell out of his glove, and he could not pick it up. Reached for it, mishandled it, couldn't grab it a second time, and that will allow Duhan to reach safely to first base. Get another chopper back to the mound. Herring using every inch he had to get the glove on it, just could not cleanly grab it. And then when he went to he got it in the glove and then tried to make the exchange and then just dropped the baseball. Mm. So a runner aboard with one out. That'll bring Harden to the plate. Pitch to the left-hander. Hit down the line and foul into the seats. So what say you, Doug Thompson? Have the Tigers done enough? Chris, I don't think so. I said I thought they did enough. If they came away with two out of three against Mississippi State, that didn't happen. I think you have to go win two out of three at Georgia. Here's a ground ball sharply hit diving his Dugas. He will knock it down oh, but no. it gets away from him. He might have. He gets up a little gingerly yeah, after he, rolling on that shoulder. Yeah the way he reacted it looked like. Might have popped that shoulder out again but he looks to be OK. Maybe he was just frustrated he couldn't get to it was a tough play he. Had to get the shirt dirty. Was able to at least knock it down, but that, that was just a really difficult play. But he did not. Something happened on that play. It looked like it popped right back in place, maybe. The way he reacted when he dove was not normal. So everybody safe first and second here with just one out. Brings Leslie to the plate. First pitch and low from Herring makes it one and zero. Oh. Leslie tonight aboard on an air. In the first, fly ball out to left in the third, and a strikeout victim to Herring in the fourth inning. The 1 0. Fastball misses high. Malazzo fires it down to second. As Duhon again dancing down there before the pitch, had to slide back head first to get to the bag. And that may be all for Griffin Herring now as Jay Johnson with a slow walk out to the mound with one out runners first and second. Again Gonzalez grounded out to the shortstop Thompson do unable to get aboard on a fielding error charge to Herring. And then a single just by Gavin Dugas puts runners first and second with one out in a tie game three threes coach Johnson out there talking with Griffin on the mound. Yes yeah, Sammy, Dutton, Sammy Dutton's ready to go. Uh, but Jay Johnson has not made a call yet. Here comes the home plate umpire to not quite yet. They brush off home plate. This is supposed to only take 30 seconds, but seems like they've relaxed that rule a little bit, and that'll be it. Jay Johnson headed back to the dugout. There won't be a change just yet. He was very emphatic with the conversation, not only to Griffin, but the rest of the infield here. Again, I'm sure a little bit of frustration. The Tigers with three errors tonight. Oh, I imagine there's a lot of frustration right now. So a 2 0 count to Leslie. The pitch to the right hander. Ground ball. Do guys playing in the shift. Knocks it down. The flip to Thompson. Not in time. Safe at second. Throw to first. Not in time. Everybody is safe. First, second, and third. And Jordan Thompson emphatically calling for a review at second base. But Chris, I don't know, brother. It looked like he was well into his slide when that ball got into Jordan Thompson's hand. It was lightning fast. It was right at Dugas, just could not field it cleanly. And Gavin Dugas just doesn't look 
like he's 100% comfortable about out there to me. So they will go under review for the second time, presented by Agme Oyster House. Again, they had two guys playing just right of second base. As Doug said, it was sharply hit right at him, but got out of the glove. And of course, McNeese uses their speed. That's how they've won 32 games this year. And again, the slide in there looks like oh, the left hand is safe. there. Yeah. Yeah. Thompson was looking out to, to into the right field area towards Dugas. He couldn't see the, the, the slide, but definitely got there beforehand, and Dugas is going to get the air. That is the fourth air of the night for the Tigers. So McNeese in a tie game, three runs, seven hits, one miscue in the field. The Tigers, though, three runs on just two hits and four errors. So we wait here as they will make a decision. Two members of the four man umpiring crew inside to take a look at the monitors. Yeah, he's, he's for sure going to be safe at second base. I mean, I would be shocked if not. Our TV audience saw the same thing we did, and uh, our radio listeners are going to have to trust me. Surprised, though, on these that it takes so long. Yeah, again, you. I mean, we watched the one angle from yeah, the first was, base camera. It was completely obvious that he was safe. But it is taking a little time here. And yeah, maybe there's something we didn't see. They, of course, have more angles than we are privy to, so the challenge continues here. Again, the ruling on the field was safe, which puts runners first, second, and third with just one out in a tie game. And now they make their way back to the field. They point to second, and he's safe. So they confirm the call on the field. And now Griffin Herring in some trouble here with one out and the bases loaded. And the cleanup hitter is at the plate. I'm surprised he's letting the lefty righty matchup stay in with Sammy Dutton being ready down to the bullpen. First pitch over gone. Ooh. Called strike on said he went around. He did. Obregon. Even some of the Tiger faithful question that call and went their way. Obregon checking with the home plate umpire says all right. Here's the 0 1 from Herring. Ground ball towards the shortstop Thompson. He will flip it to Dugas. It's a little short to Dugas. And the throw to first not in time. They couldn't turn two. And that will bring in Duhan to score. And McNeese now with their first lead of the game, four to three. Again, hit at Thompson. A little underhand toss to Dugas, but it barely made it. Yeah. He had to lean to get it. And then, of course, had his momentum going the other way. Had to yep. throw across his body with a relay. Thompson way too far away for the underhand flip. Should have just stopped where he was and give the overhand, you know, toss, a little firm toss to Dugas. It was pretty much a Taylor made double play, what you were looking for. So Obregon, a board on a fielder's choice, drives in a run. McNeese now leading 4 3. Harden at third, Obregon at first, and Burkell at the plate. First offering from Herring, a cold strike, it's 0 and 1. Herring will offer up his 41st pitch of the night, swung on by Burkell down the line and foul left field way. Gets ahead 0 and 2. A run on one hit, two errors by the Tigers here in the top of the sixth. They now trail 4 to 3. The 0 2 pitch. Just missed the outside corner by maybe half a baseball. Herring thought he had it. Malazzo thought he had it, but it's one and two. That's a good 0-2 pitch. A better take by Burkell. Who's still behind in the count, one and two. Runners on the corners, two outs. One-two pitch. Got him to chase this one well off the plate. Swing and a miss. Down goes Burkell, but 
McNeese leads now four to three. One run on one hit, two errors by the Tigers. The Cowboys leave two men on. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Four three McNeese. This is fighting Tiger baseball. LSU at home for the final time here in the regular season led early 3-0 McNeese with a three-run third tied the game up and then with a couple of costly errors by LSU defensively they played a run to the Cowboys in the top of the sixth and they now lead 4-3 Tigers will send up five six and seven Beloso Travinsky and Joe Bear. Beloso one for two on the night first pitch a strike offered up. Even though it got away from the catcher, Gonzalez, it is 0 and 1 to Beloso. This delivery right at the knees. Called strike two, nothing and two. Gotta be honest, you take a look at the game so far tonight. As this pitch low and inside to make it one ball, two strikes. This McNeese pitching staff. Started by Derek Cherry has done a good job for the most part getting ahead of hitters. The one two lifted in the air down the line in left foul territory Hex giving chase. As well as the third baseman Harden who slide maybe overran it. Falls harmlessly to the turf behind him and that will allow Beloso to swing again with a one two count. Brock Bartholomew the new pitcher for McNeese is the lowest DRA on this staff. With a 2.66 ERA, this is his 15th appearance on the year. He's gone 20 innings, allowed 20 hits, only six runs, 12 walks, and 19 strikeouts. This one slammed, but foul Watch line out. drive into the seats. Hide the base. Right. Still one and two. So, uh, judging by that, coming out here with their number one reliever, you could tell this one means something to the Cowboys. One two, a ground ball foul down the first base line. Also hitting 296, got nine home runs, one triple earlier this year, three doubles. Shift is on with the left hander and the one two off speed misses high. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch. Loso stays away and it misses low and outside. That'll fill the count three and two. <laughs> Payoff delivery. Again, slap but foul towards the bullpen and right. Takes a bounce and into the seats it goes. Three balls, two strikes to Beloso. Everybody's smiling down there. A young guy was smart, brought his glove, made a play. 
Another payoff pitch, and this time Beloso drives this one high and deep. He will flip the bat, and this ball is okay. gone. High up in the diamond deck for Cade Beloso. He joins the double digit home run club. That's his 10th of the year. And with one swing of the bat, we're tied 4 4. Yeah, I hope nobody got hurt that first base dug out of the Tigers because I'm pretty sure Beloso just flipped his bat all the way into the, the top of it. Not sure how far that one went, but it definitely cleared the diamond deck. I'm guessing about 410 feet. A no brainer off the bat of Kate Beloso, a matching 10 home runs to his freshman year when he hit 10 home runs, I believe. It's a pretty cool way to uh, book in your career with at least 10 jacks in both seasons. And we got a new baseball game. Third hit of the night for the Tigers. It's a big one. Tied the game for all. Now we'll see Hayden Travinsky. First pitch to Hayden. This is high from Bartholomew, and it's 1 0. This guy can put one out there in the bleachers, too. 1 0. High and deep left center field. Harden going back. He will just admire it. It's gone. Back to back Jacks. Hayden Travinsky, home run number six. And in the blink of an eye, the Tigers pounce. They lead 5-4. Yeah, that was a massive blast. Didn't hit the bleachers, just missed the bleachers out in right center field. Or excuse me, left center field, about 20 feet to the right of them. Once again, no information on how far that ball was hit, but there was no question about it as soon as it left the bat. That was another homer for Hayden Travinsky, and he's probably still at about a home run every seven or eight at bats. Seems like that was probably the eighth at bat since his last one. Time called, going to be a meeting on the mound here as Brock Bartholomew is given up the lead in quick fashion here. Two runs on two hits, back to back home runs. Veloso and Travinsky. Bartholomew had given up two home runs all year. A right hander tossing. For the Cowboys down and left. We went back to back to back earlier, right? This yep. year? Yep. Pretty good chance to do it again here. Braden Joe Bear will come to the plate. Meeting all broke it up on the mound. Marthelemy back out there on the bump. Tigers had two hits through five trips to the plate. They've matched that here with two blasts as this one lifted in the air. Shallow left center field. Brain Joe Bear keeps the hits coming for LSU. Single to left center. His 36th hit of the year. Gets a runner aboard. Still nobody out. Bottom of the sixth inning. So now we'll see Jordan Thompson, who was hit by a pitch back in the fourth inning, laid down the sack bunt in the second, and I think that will be all for Brock Bartholomew. Is now a yep. slow walk to the mound. That's uh, a second visit for sure, going to the bullpen here. So they will call upon a new pitcher, pitching change powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. Back to back jacks for the Tigers, Beloso and Travinsky. They go yard, give the Tigers a 5 4 lead. Braden Jobert follows up with a single to left center. Still nobody out. Tigers will have Jordan Thompson when we come back. 5 4 LSU leads. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball.
Tiger bats coming to life here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Kate Beloso led it off. Homer to right field, deep to right field. Travinsky would follow. He hammered one to left center. Tigers took a 5 4 lead, then Braden Jobert singled to left center field. And the Cowboys make a pitching change. Peyton Tinkler now will take over a right hander as Jordan Thompson stands in. Joe Bear a short lead off of first. Tinkler fires to the plate, misses outside, and it's 1 0 to Thompson, who again is looking for his first hit of the night. Laid down a sack bunt in the second, was hit by a pitch, got aboard in the fourth. Tinkler, the right hander from the stretch, delivers, swing and a miss. Thompson chases that one, it's 1 and 1. Tinkler, 6'1, 180 pounds out of Wichita, Kansas, transferred in from Southern Illinois. He enters the game with a 14.85 ERA in nine games. He has only worked six and two thirds this year. He's allowed 11 hits, 11 runs. All have been earned. He has five walks and five strikeouts. 1-1 one, one way outside from Tinkler, and that makes it 2-1 and one to Thompson. Tiger team, 104 home runs on the year. 2 1. Again, misses outside. Tinkler with a fastball off the mark, and it's 3 and 1. Yeah, five players now, Chris, in double digits with du with Beloso getting to 10. Dugas and Cruz have 13 each. Jared Jones has 14, and Tommy White with 18. 3 1 to Thompson. Missed outside, ball four. Still nobody out. The Tigers now with runners first and second. Alex Malazzo will try his hand at the plate. Yeah, Malazzo had a tough at, at bat last time. He was called upon to bunt, took the first strike, missed the second one. And then took strike three. Tinkler checks the runner at second and fires to the plate, showing bunt, pulls it back, and again the pitch missed wide outside. One ball, no strikes. Joe Bear takes his lead off second. Thompson likewise at first. Again, squaring to bunt Malazzo. Tinkler fires. That's a strike at the letters. As Malazzo tried to pull back, looking for clarification from home plate umpire Jordan Alvarado. Wanted to know where that pitch was. Got the answer. Now we'll get set again. One ball, one strike. Tinkler fires, showing bunt. That pitch at the knees a called strike. So now one and two to Malazzo. Runners take their lead first and second. Nobody out. Tigers lead 5 4. Here's a swing and a miss. Slider got him down on strikes, says Tinkler. Records the first out of the inning. That will bring the Tigers to the top of the order. Gavin Dugas, who's 0 for 3 tonight. Last time hit into a 5 4 3 double play. Tinkler's first offering. At the knees for a strike. Fastball at 91 makes it 0 and 1. The 0 1 delivery. Missed high and outside. Fastball again to Dugas. One ball, one strike. Tigers up by a run, five to four. Chance to add more to it. The slider missed low and away. Dugas gave it thought, but wisely stays away. Two and one. With one out, the two-one pitch. High to Dugas. It's now three balls, one strike. 
Ken Beloso led off with a homer to right. Travinsky followed with a homer to left center. Joe Bear with a single to left center. Thompson walked. Malazzo struck out swinging, so with one out, hitters count three and one. Dugas awaits and a ground ball. Uh, and it's going to hit, yeah, I believe, out. Joe Bear. So he was trying to straddle, jump over it. And the runner between second and third is out. Again, the Cowboys immediately looking to the umpires to make that call. Well, they're calling Joe Bear out. <clears throat> They will award Thompson second base because as soon as it hit Joe Bear, it's a dead ball. Dead ball. And and, and look, he, he did every that ball was hit hard. He did everything he could to get out of the way. It just there was there was really nothing he could do. Honestly, it probably saved the Tigers a double play. Because Leslie, the shortstop, was right in his tracks. He didn't. He didn't have to move much for the ball. Tough break for the Tigers. So it does record the second out of the inning. However, Thompson is at second. Two guys arrives at first after the dead ball hitting the base runner. Now we'll see Trey Morgan. So still a chance. First pitch, ground ball right back at the shortstop Leslie. This time he flips to Burkell at second. And we'll get the lead, or rather, Dugas at second for out number three. But the Tigers, after falling behind, waste little time. Two runs on four hits, two big bombs. Beloso followed by Dravinsky. And the Tigers now lead 5 4. We head to the top of the seventh. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball. We've got some birthdays in the crowd tonight and an anniversary. I'd like to wish happy anniversary 44 years to Myra and Mark. Mr. Baseball wishes happy birthday to Jackson Dronet, to Ryan Robert, to Grant Austin, to Ron Harkwood, to Linda Mancuso, to Brady Smith, to Catherine Romero, to Bo Romero, to John Kaluski, and to Daniel Gaspar. Happy birthday, happy anniversary. Thank you for spending your evening with us here in LA Fox Stadium, Skip Bergman Field. Now pitching for LSU number 17, Sam Dutton. Dutton is the new pitcher for the Tigers. LSU back on top 5 4. We hit the top of the seventh inning. Two big blasts for the Tigers. The long ball in effect there in the bottom of the sixth inning. Back to back home runs. Tigers led early 3 0. Gave up three runs in the top of the third. Nice would take a quick lead 4 to 3. With a run scored in the top of the sixth, but LSU would answer back. Still a tight game, still hotly contested. Got three innings to work with here. Sam Dutton will get the call to take over on the mound for LSU. Sam, a 5.87 ERA on the season. With 15 and a third innings pitch. He'll face off against Hollins, and the first pitch of the right hander is tapped and a little bouncer foul down the third base line. Just like the winning lineup, Centos has the all star services for all of your business needs. Everything from uniforms to kitchens and restroom solutions. Get ready for the workday with Centos. There's a breaking ball from Dunn for a strike, and he gets ahead early. Nothing and two. Tigers got the start tonight from Blake Money. Went three innings, six hits, three runs, all three earned, one walk, four strikeouts. As that's a called strike three on the outside corner. Leaning in, giving it a look. 
But Hollins let it go and Dutton with the punch out of his first Super One food strike out of the game. Good start and there's one gone here in the top of the seventh inning. Griffin Herring went three innings as well gave up one hit one run it was unearned. Two walks and two strikeouts. So Dutton trying to keep the Cowboys quiet for his duration on the mound as that pitch missed high for ball one one and oh to Cooper Hex the left fielder who's two for three tonight couple of singles drove in a run has reached base all three times got a board on a fielder's choice in the fifth inning pitch to the left hander from Dutton a fastball that missed just inside two and oh. And the Tigers having to utilize nine pitchers on Sunday in that tough 14 13 extra inning loss to Mississippi State. 2 0. There's a strike. Got it where he wanted it. Painted the inner corner, and it's 2 and 1. So again, they'll need arms this weekend, but looking for some good quick outings tonight. That one fouled back into the screen. 2 and 2. Dutton making his 15th appearance on the season. Here's a ground ball. They had Duga shifted over towards first base with the left hander up, and that one just sneaks by into right center field for a one out single. Hex now three for four on the night. We'll bring up Darden, who's one for three. Again, eight hits tonight for the Cowboys. Darden lined out, smoked a line drive to Thompson last time at shortstop in the fifth inning. He was part of that five single third inning. Also drove in a run. Pitch from Dutton, a strike. Drops in in the zone. It's 0 1. Dutton checks the runner at first. Now will turn and fire. Just a short lead. Easily back to the base is Hexed. McNeese, as we mentioned, the start of tonight's game 32 and 18. 12 and 12 in the always tough Southland Conference. Here's the 0 1. Short of the plate. That'll leave it up now. One ball, one strike. They have finished their Southland Conference slate. They will host Miami of Ohio. Beginning tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. The 1 1 pitch. Jammed him, pops him up. Down the line, third base way. Malazzo calling for it in foul territory, and he will miss it. Tommy White was coming in from third. Malazzo called him off. But again, the catcher just ran it a little too far towards the dugout. The ball came back at him. Couldn't put a glove on it. And that will allow Darden to stay alive. So missed opportunity there for an out. Keeps the count one ball and one strike. McNeese, by the way, as Jay Johnson, Tiger head coach, alluded to prior to the game, have a chance to win that Southland Conference tournament, maybe get a chance into the NCAAs. Runner goes, slow bouncing ground ball to short. Thompson picks it up, has to unleash the first, and does so. In time for the second out of the inning. Not an easy play. Again, another slow bouncer. Seen a ton of those tonight. Yeah, and that's probably an indication that the, the dirt right in front of that home plate is probably packed a little bit too tight. I'm sure the grounds crew will take note. But there have been a ton of choppers tonight. But the Southland Conference actually being played at Joe Miller Ballpark in Lake Charles. First delivery. Breaking ball for a strike. Nicely done by Dutton to Gonzalez. The bottom of the order who's 0 for 2. Did reach base in the second on a walk given up by Blake Money. Potential tying run and scoring position down at second in Hext. The 0 1 short of the plate. Blocked up by Malazzo. And Hext will dance his way back to second.
15th outing of the year for Sammy Dutton. All of them have been out of the bullpen. One ball, one strike. Pitch to the right hander. Ground ball again to Thompson. Again, a slow roller this time. He will throw across the first in time easily to get Gonzalez for the third out of the inning. So Dutton comes in, no runs, one hit, one man left on. Tigers go to the dugout leading 5 4. Time to stretch it out here at the box on this Tuesday night. 5 4. LSU leads. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball. LSU getting a challenge tonight from McNeese. They lead as we hit the bottom of the seventh inning. LSU five, McNeese four. Dylan Cruz will lead it off for the Tigers. And a lot of games across the SEC canceled tonight yeah. due to weather, but a couple of games going on and a couple of teams having a little bit of trouble. Not as easy a ride as many would expect. First delivery to Cruz catches the outside corner from Peyton Tickler who continues on the mound and it's 0 1. Yeah Tennessee's leading Belmont 8 to 5 but Belmont actually led that game for a little bit. Another high chopping ground ball near the third base bag Harden picks it up what a tough play. throw but a great dig by Hollins at first. Able to take it off the bounce keep his foot on the back Cruz retired one away. Yeah Hollins has had some highlight plays over there on some some of his picks tonight. But that was also a great play by the third baseman. He had one chance. That was to get rid of it as quickly as possible. Because speeds can pick him up and put, or excuse me, Cruz can pick him up and put him down. Tommy White to the plate. He's one for two tonight, including an RBI double in the first. Tinkler misses this one high and it gets away from Gonzalez. Rolls to the backstop and it's one and oh. Tommy also reached by way of walk in the third, grounds it out to. The aforementioned third baseman Taylor Harden last time in the fifth inning. Tinkler's 1 0 pitch. Big swing just missed. Pops it up foul behind the plate. Off speed from Tinkler, and it's one ball and one strike. Again, the final weekend of SEC play. How things will look on Saturday evening. Everybody waiting to see. A couple of big time series across the league. The 1 1. This one a sharply hit ground ball no chance for Burke Hill at second base to get near that one. A bouncer into right center field and Tommy White has his second hit of the night and he's aboard with one out. It's so hard to believe he's got another year of college baseball because I mean it, he it's just it moves too slow for him. I mean he he really does look like a different level hitter and he has all year not just tonight against McNeese but all year long. His ability to let the ball travel and hit it the other way with authority is off the charts. Cade Beloso stands in two for three tonight. He tied the game up with a solo home run in the sixth to make it 4 4. And the first pitch from Tinkler, a called strike on the inside corner, 0 1. 
Hill one pitch swung on. Tap rolls to the backstop. Nothing and two the count LSU. Got the long ball in play there in the bottom of the sixth inning Beloso and Travinsky and back to back at bats. Shift is on to the left handed Beloso pitch from Tinkler misses outside one and two. And South Carolina is hosting Charlotte tonight. And currently the Gamecocks trail seven to five in the bottom of the seventh. One two misses outside make it two balls two strikes South Carolina ton of momentum. Kept rising kept rising but they have really struggled down the stretch here not only in midweek but certainly in conference weekends as Tinkler lets loose of this one nowhere close high and outside three and two. So Chris nine games were on the schedule tonight originally. And it looks like only three teams will play. One out runner at first. Pitch to Beloso missed high ball four. Tommy White off and running now about halfway down he'll slow up and walk his way to second base so the walk to Beloso puts runners first and second and now Hayden Travinsky is one for two and the one was a big one solo shot his sixth of the year to left center field. Yeah a chance to to make a good night a great night right here for Travinsky. A right hander is tossing for the Cowboys down in the bullpen. And the time is called and they're going to make the change. Probably a good good move. Hayden Dravinsky hit his sixth home run in 41 at bats. So a pitching change powered by Sunshine your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. Tigers leading over the Cowboys 5 4. One out bottom of the seventh LSU with runners first and second. We'll tell you about the new McNeese pitcher when we come back. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball. Christian Vega going to take over for McNeese. Right handed hurler last appearance this past weekend. Sunday's game in the loss to Northwestern State in Natchitoches where the Cowboys dropped two out of three. They lost that game eight to four. Vega with an appearance went one and two thirds innings. Gave up no hits no runs. No walks one strikeout so he'll be called upon here with the Tigers leading five four and a Minor threat at the moment with runners first and second. Hayden Travinsky will be at the plate. Fans, visit your local Kubota dealer, see why Kubota, the number one rated reliable tractor under 100 horsepower in the U.S. of A. Visit LSUKubotaDealers.com for your nearest Kubota dealer. Test drive a Kubota today. A 
All right, weren't we talking about Hayden Travinsky hitting another home run or something like that? It says that uh, he does it with pretty good uh, consistency. And just 41 plate appearances on the year with six home runs. This delivery short of the plate for ball one, one and zero. Oh. Let's just see if, if so. The most at bats on the team is 187. That's White and Morgan both have 187. So if we had 180 at bats, jeez. The 1-0 -oh to Hayden. Stays away, missed in on the hands. Two balls, no strikes from Vega. Vega, 4.76 ERA. Has a 3 and 3 record on the year. Two saves for the Cowboys. 2 0 to Travinsky. Fastball missed low. Now three balls, no strikes. Here's a good count for home run number seven. So will the next pitch be if he takes this for a strike. 3 0. Skips off the dish, ball four. So the Tigers now with the bases loaded, under two outs. One away here in the bottom of the seventh. I'll bring Braden Jobert to the plate. Braden tonight, one for one, has reached base all three times. Board on a walk and scored in the second. Hit by a pitch in the fourth, and of course had that single to follow up those back-to-back -back home runs in the sixth inning. Right guy, right spot. Here we go, six. White at third, Beloso at second, Travinsky on the walk at first. Delivery to Jobert off speed, strike on the outer half, 0 and 1. Tigers have the momentum, only a one run lead here in the bottom of the seventh, 5 to 4. The 0 1 pitch down in the dirt, great job by Gonzalez. Sliding over to keep it in front of him. It's one ball, one strike. Bases loaded, 1 1 pitch. Fouled off the bat, not the leg of Joe Bear. One ball and two strikes. Tigers begin action on Thursday. Six o'clock first pitch against Georgia at Foley Field. Six o'clock on Friday and then conclude with a 12 noon start on Saturday. The team will leave Athens on Sunday. To make their way to Hoover. Get ready for the 2023 SEC tournament. The one two. Called strike three. They are able to put that one right across the plate. Joe Bear obviously not looking for it. And he's down on strikes, two gone. Jay Johnson, interesting last night. I asked him about after tonight's game, that long road stretch. Leaving tomorrow, arriving in Athens. Yeah, it's straight from there to Hoover, right? And he said now with school behind him, exams yeah. all done. He kind of likes getting him out of town and Says we can allow them to be engaged yet relax and recover. There's a strike on the first offering to Thompson on the inside corner, surprising Jordan a little bit. Yeah, after the walk there to Travinsky, Vegas has really had a good breaking ball. Bases loaded, the 0 1. Missed again. outside, they'll appeal to first. They say Thompson held back, and it's 1 and 1. I joked with coach I said you know I think it's those of us who are have a few more years on players that we enjoy being in our own beds and staying at home and I'm not sure that it mattered much to me between the ages of 18 and 22 and I imagine the same is true for these Tigers the 1 1 fastball a strike at the knees and again Jordan thought it was a tad low but he falls behind in the count one and two. Bases loaded here. Tigers lead by one. A chance to open it up. But with two outs, the one two. And a foul tip off the bat of Thompson will keep him alive. One ball, two strikes. Tiger fans get ready to taste victory with a victory grill from Barbecue Guys. Get your victory grill today. Become a backyard barbecue champ only at BBQGuys.com.
Wide at third, Beloso at second, Travinsky at first with two down. The one two to Thompson. And a swing and a miss. So after giving up the wall, Christian Vegas settles down nicely for Coach Justin Hill and the Cowboys and avoids disaster here in the bottom of the seventh. Tigers get no runs, one hit, they leave the bases loaded. We head to the top of the eighth inning. LSU leading 5 4. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball. Still a tight game here on this Tuesday night. LSU leading 5 4 over McNeese. Cowboys come to the plate, top of the order. Braden Duhon to lead it off. First pitch from Sam Dutton, a breaking ball that misses, comes back with a fastball on the 1 0, catches the outside corner. It's 1 and 1. Tigers tonight, five runs, seven hits, including two home runs. They have four errors. They've left nine men on base. Dutton Ooh. just missed with this one outside. Two and one. McNeese, four runs, eight hits, one air. They've left 11 men on. Two one from Dutton in the air. Left field, Morgan going back. Plenty of room, gets over in time, and he will make the play for out number one. So Duhan retired, and that will bring Harden to the plate as see a little see a little tossing going on for the Tigers down in the bullpen. Again, Blake Money with the start tonight. Griffin Herring would take over. Now we see Sam Dutton. Gavin Gidry down there, one of those guys. Looks like Thatcher Heard, too. I like Sammy Dutton right now. Getting ahead, staying ahead. Peyton Harden stands in. Left hander takes the first pitch and a strike on the outside corner. Dutton, an inning and a third, giving up just one hit. No walks, one strikeout thus far. The 0 1 pitch. Miss low and outside. That evens the count one ball, one strike. Need this to be a quick, uneventful inning. 1 1 from Dutton. Swing lifted to center field. Cruz, though, settling back. Waits on it and gloves it for out number two. So Harden retired. Quickly two down. I'll bring Leslie to the plate. Who for the Cowboys tonight in the three hole, 0 for 4. Can't have a 1 2 3 inning without getting the first two. Tigers have done that on multiple occasions tonight. Got to finish it off here. Dutton fires it to the right hander and it's just short of the plate. Off speed 1 and 0. Again, a number of guys still continuing to audition in this pitching staff as here's a ground ball. Backhanded by Thompson. It's short. The throw is going to be low. Travinsky digs it out. They'll say safe. Looked like our first base umpire, Jeremy Hayes, was looking to see if he controlled it. Not sure if he thought the throw was behind the speedy Leslie. I think he was trying to see if Travinsky uh, gloved it cleanly, but. 
doesn't look like initially we're going to get. Umpires certainly don't think there's any reason to look at it. And the Tigers have already used their challenges. We'll watch it here. No, oh, just took a slow bounce. He tried to keep the hand over top of the ball in the glove, but didn't really skip to the first baseman. Took a bounce and rose. So now at the plate, Obregon swings and misses. It's 0-1. Runner at first, and again. Hard to get a clean three up three down against it, the Cowboys. It, it hasn't tonight. happened. It, we haven't had a one two three inning yet. The closest was the fourth inning with a leadoff walk and then we went one two three right after that. Miss low and away from Dutton one ball and one strike. I mentioned the auditions not only for a game three starter but I think over the last two weekends. Also where you are where you need to be out of the bullpen. The bull, yeah, every bullpen position is available. The one one. Hit in the air to get center it, field. Cruz it. on the way in, but it takes a bounce in front of him, and now we'll have a two out single. Back to back singles. That one, Obregon, arrives safely, and runners now first and second. Looks like we'll get a pinch runner here for the Cowboys. And we'll see if Jay Johnson elects to go to the bullpen here. Again, he's got Gavin Gidry. Looks like he's ready down there. And Thatcher Hurd's just starting to toss. Nope, he's going to stick with Dutton here. I like the move. Well, we have a pinch runner, number 47. No 47 on the roster, so. There's a pinch runner for my B school. his ID just <laughs> Bill Frank has. <laughs> he rarely doesn't have the answer for the number, but. I was waiting on Bill, but yeah, we were. <laughs> Bill didn't have it either, so. We're not sure. There's not a 47 on their roster, not a 47 online. So, number 47 comes into pinch run at first base. That could just be some guy they pull from the stands for all we know. One ball, no strikes on the first offering to Burkell. Runners first and second with two outs. Yeah, when in doubt, trust Bill Frankes. And when Bill has no answers, uh oh. There are none. Yeah. The 1 0. Swing and a miss. And to chase a fastball up in the zone evens a count one and one. Yeah, I think it's important here. I also like the move. Stick with Dutton here. See if he can find this third out. Yeah, I mean, the one, one of the things these bullpen guys need is some confidence. Here's the one one. Breaking ball short of the plate. Malazzo has to chase it out in front. He does so. It's two and one. Confidence is big. The second part of that is being able to work out of semi jams yeah. a little bit of trouble. You can't duplicate this you know in practice this only happens in games and there's a great opportunity for Dutton. Two and one the count runners first and second and the pitch fouled back towards us. Thankfully the screen is there and it's now two and two. So with two men on two outs and a two two count deuce is wild as they say. And we'll see if Dutton can get the Tigers back in the dugout here. They lead five four. Top of the eighth inning. Here's the make it happen pitch. Dutton's 2 2. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, come on. Not sure where it They're missed. so scared to miss the, the umpires these days. Just so scared to miss, but that's that's a strike. Three and two now the count with runners first and second. Dutton fires. High chopper again. Charging in. Travinsky will throw to Dutton. Covering it first in time nice for out play. number three. So the Cowboys again. No runs. Two hits. They leave two men on. They trail LSU five to four. We head to the bottom of the eighth here at the box. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball.
Five to four. LSU leading by one over McNeese. Alex Malazzo will lead it off. Then top of the order, Dugas and Morgan. The Tigers five run on seven hits. Two big home runs tonight. Beloso and Travinsky back to back. Got the Tigers back on top after six innings. McNeese though. Pesky as can be. Four runs on ten hits. They've left 13 men on base. Like a horse fly. Just won't leave you alone. Christian Vega continues, settled down after coming into the game. He'll face Malazzo, who's 0 for 3 tonight. First pitch, breaking ball for a strike. He's got the control on the curve and gets ahead 0 and 1. One of the great things about having Doug Thompson in the booth. I was booth, just about to talk about this. Well, how great you are? No. No, oh, okay. No, not that. Okay. First, the 0 1. Here's a ground ball down the line at first. Nice snag over there oh, no. by Hollins, but he couldn't handle the exchange. He was looking to throw it to Vega coming over to first, but could not get it out and make the throw. So Malazzo will arrive safely. He just he just panicked, just couldn't find the ball. Similar to the to the uh, what happened to Griffin Herring earlier today. I mean, he it had it, had plenty of time, and just fumbled it around. What a great play and a dive towards the line. But couldn't finish the play and the Tigers will try to take advantage of that with a leadoff man aboard now back to the top of the order and Gavin Dugas. Gavin one for four had his first hit back in the sixth inning. First pitch and Dugas slaps it but foul down the line and left one of the great pleasures is having some of the greats yeah. not just some a lot of the greats of LSU baseball over the years to come by and say hello to Doug I get the opportunity to introduce myself and say hey but uh, we see some great ones who come by here and make a visit. The 0 1. Nice pitch by Vega on the inside corner gets ahead 0 and 2. I was just about to say that's one of my favorite parts of being up here is for you to meet some of the buddies that I play with. And before that, of course, as well, we've, we always get to see Brian Bennett. We've, we just saw Eric Berth a lot, a, a great teammate, a great dude all around. The 0 2 swing and a miss. And Dugas stat on strikes. So the first out of the inning. Again, they could do a good job settling in. Of course, they give Malazzo the single, but he's got to be a little frustrated they weren't able to get that first out. Yeah, Malazzo getting the single there, and and Cruz not getting a single on that <laughs> shot that he hit down the third baseline earlier. We're gonna have to talk a little bit after this. Trey Morgan stands in. Trey 0 for 4, due for something, and the first pitch inside brushes him back. It's 1 and 0. No, but Eric Berthelot, one of those uh, <clears throat> those glue guys. Just the, the locker room wouldn't be the same without that guy in it, regardless of how much he's out there on the field or not. One ball, no strikes. Runner at first, one down. The fastball from Vega off the mark outside, and it's 2 and 0. By the way, Want to give credit? We had a pinch runner come in with the number 47 for McNeese. It's actually Connor Westenberg. We were told who on the roster is wearing number 15. So Austin we want to forgot give, his jersey. We give Westenberg a little credit. Runner goes. The throw down to second. Going to bounce, but the throw was in time, but mishandled at short by Leslie. The ball gets away from him, and Malazzo in with a stolen base. Look at Malazzo with the wheels out there. It was a one hopper from Gonzalez. And again, it looked like the throw was there, but. Oh, it beat him. Yeah. But Leslie just, couldn't uh, hold on. Yeah, just spinning around in the glove a little too much. So the Tigers get a runner in scoring position with less than two outs. The 3 0 to Morgan is a strike at the letters on the outer half to make it 3 and 1. By the way, Eric Berthelot had some big innings in the College World Series in 1997. Against Stanford, if I recall. Correctly. <clears throat> Here's the 3 1 to Morgan. Missed inside, ball four. So Morgan will reach base for the second time tonight. And with one out, the Tigers have runners first and second, and we will see Mr. Dylan Cruz. Yeah, that's the that's the ninth free pass tonight. Tenth if you include the error they made, but ninth free pass, three hit by pitches, and six walks for the Cowboys pitching staff. So now Cruz, who got aboard on an error in the first. 
reach base streak extended now looking for a hit. And with runners first and second and a one run lead he certainly wants one. I want one for him. This game is filled with peaks and valleys even if your name is Ted Williams. The one out of Cruz stays away drops in low two balls no strikes. Two-zero delivery. Chopper, slow bouncer in the grass at third. Harden comes in, throws to first. It gets away from Hollins. That will allow Malazzo reaching third to come in to score. They're just now picking the baseball up. Cruz safe at first. Malazzo scores. Morgan into third, and the Tigers extend their lead, six to four. You yeah, knew that, that was trouble off the bat. That was trouble off the bat. Again, Cruz can really move down the line. They've not again. Awarded hit or error there. I think that's a hit all day. Not an easy play at all. I don't know. Maybe it was an error. Yep, they gave it an error. Runners on the corners, just one out. Tommy White to the plate. Fastball from Vega misses in at the hands. One and oh. I get asked a lot. What do you love about college athletics and Dylan Cruz is normally one of the answers I give just simply because he had a chance a big chance to go right into pro baseball but he wanted the experience he wanted it here at LSU and he is just a prototypical student athlete as Tommy White ropes one high in the air major league pop fly to left center Harden has to wait on it eventually it comes down Trey Morgan will tag up he will come in and score and Sack fly RBI for Tommy White. That's number 86 this season. And the Tigers add one more. It's 7 4 LSU. Yeah, that one scraped the stars. You can't hit it much higher than that. If he'd have just got a couple more, a couple degrees lower, that would have been a very, very long home run. So with two down, Cruz still at first. We'll see. Cade Beloso. By the way, he's in, I think it's sixth all time by himself now. Passing up West Grisham with 86 RBIs. Vega fires and the pitch misses high. Talk Ooh. about a great player, West Grisham. Ooh. Is he going to stop by tonight? Oh, I wish. You know, him <laughs> and Eric Berthelot are good buddies. Maybe so. <laughs> One ball, no strikes to Beloso. Now a turn and a throw over to keep an eye on Cruz, who slides back safely. Okay, tonight two for three. Good to see him swinging the bat well. Joined that double digit home run club. Had the solo home run in the sixth. Tie the game at four all. There's a strike on the inside corner. Evens it up one ball and one strike. And when you think about, you know, Tommy White's season, he had the injury, missed three or four games, and then all the 10 run rules. I mean, I think it's safe to say he's probably another 10, 12, 15 at bat shy of what if, if the 10 run rule weren't a thing this year. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Down the middle for a strike. Beloso behind in the count 1-2. and 14-10 run rules, is that right? Mm-hmm. So you got to think there's probably at least 12 at-bats in there. The three or four games he missed, there's probably another 15, 20 at-bats that he, he did not get to participate in. Another throw over to keep an eye on Cruz. He slides back head first. Still 1-2 the count to Beloso. Tigers now lead 7-4. Seven runs on nine hits. Four errors stands out. McNeese still four runs on ten hits, two errors. Setting up outside to Beloso. The pitch is there, but low. Evens a count two and two. I'm pretty sure four errors this year is the most <clears throat> in a game. I'll let you know for sure. Tigers two runs two hits one error by the Cowboys here in the bottom of the eighth. Two two to Beloso swing and a miss. Down on strikes as Vega records his fourth strikeout of the night. But the Tigers do extend their lead two runs on two hits. 
One man left on. The Cowboys commit one error. It's now seven for LSU. Last chance for McNeese. Top of the ninth coming up. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball. LSU carries a three run lead into the top of the ninth inning. They lead seven to four over McNeese. Leading off for the Cowboys, Braley Hollins, a right hander, is Sam Dutton. Gets ahead quickly after a swing and a miss. It's nothing in two. Couple of changes. Trey Morgan moves from left field to first base defensively for LSU. Josh Stevenson takes over in left. And Paxton Kling takes over for Joe Bear in right field. And here's a knock and a base hit in the left off the bat of Hollins. It's his second hit of the night. And the leadoff man aboard for the Cowboys in a three run game. Yeah, an 0 2 pitch there. That's not the one you want. Sammy just left a foul or curveball, sorry. Up in the wheelhouse there. The, the hitter is looking for off speed when he sees it up there in the zone. Really easy for him to get that barrel through. We have to pitch around that, try to get a double play ball here. Cooper Hex now will stand in, a left hander. He's three for four tonight. Three singles, driven in a run with a base hit in the third. Dutton comes inside and in low, and it's a called strike 0 and 1 with a fastball. The runner in first in Hollins. Here's a ground ball hit through the six hole with Thompson playing shaded to second base. Back to back singles to left. And two men aboard here with nobody out. And that brings Jay Johnson out of the dugout quickly and, and expecting to make a change here with a three run lead, seven to four. Yeah, he just made the call. He'll go to Gavin Gidry here with first and second and no outs. Tough outing or tough way to end it there for. Sammy Dutton who really pitched well the first two innings through strikes got ahead and that's what Jay Johnson's looking for at this moment. Pitching change powered by Sunshine your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. Cowboys with runners first and second LSU leading seven to four here in the top of the ninth. Get back to it after this. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball.
Gavin Gidry going to take over here. Top of the ninth inning with LSU leading 7 4. It's been a once again a back and fair uh, back and forth affair tonight. LSU had a 3 0 lead earlier, tied 3 3. McNeese would enjoy a 4 3 lead. Not very long. LSU eventually got back on top 5 to 4. They added a couple of more. There in the bottom of the eighth inning, but now the Cowboys runners first and second. Gidry takes over at the plate. Taylor Darden, a right hander. Righty on righty matchup, and Gidry delivers. Misses low, ball one. Gavin Gidry is making his 14th appearance of the year. He's worked 15 and two thirds innings, allowed 12 hits, 11 runs, eight earned. He has 10 walks and 23 strikeouts. Here's the 1 0. Missed outside, ball 2 2 0. Gidry's 3 0 on the year comes in out of Lake Charles, Louisiana, went to Barb. Of course, probably or likely very familiar with several of these McNeese players. 2 0, there's the strike at the letters, outer half. Fastball makes it 2 and 1. It's got to be at least a Barb buck or two out there. There is. Runners first and second, nobody out. Gidry's 2 1 pitch. Again, same place. Outside corner called strike two and two. A couple of big moments for Gidry in his freshman campaign. The first comes yeah. to mind on the road at South Carolina. The 2 2. I called pitch. strike three. Records the punch out, one gone here in the top of the night. One down, two to go for the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Beautiful pitch by Gidry. Yeah, it was. And he's got great makeup for a freshman. I mean, he really competes hard out there. He wants to be out there. He wants to be in the moment. One of those type kids that hopes the ball's hit to him every play. Hunter. Hunter is pitching for So a pinch hitter coming to the plate. Cade Hunter. Cade Hunter, a right hander. Hunter is senior out of Comfort, Texas. As this pitch down in the dirt outside, but a great job, and he'll get a hand for the effort to block that up. Alex Malazzo keeping the runners at first and second. It's one and zero. Oh. Hunter, Kate Hunter hitting 171 on the year, just his 36th plate yeah. appearance. Pitch to the right-hander, popped up foul back behind the plate, evens it up one and one. Thatcher Hurd still staying loose down in that Tiger bullpen. Here's the delivery missed high from Gidry, two and one. Cowboys again. Hunter, the potential tying run at the plate. They've got Hollins at second. Hexed at first base, one down, top of the ninth. They trail 7 4. 2 1 from Gidry. Another oh, good one. Oh, wow. Good looking pitch. Just missed the outside corner. 3 and 1. Yeah, you need that one to be where the strike three was on the batter before. Might have missed a little bit off the outside corner there. So now with the Runners first and second, 3 1 pitch. Hit in the air, down the line in right. Kling will give it a look, but it'll find its way four rows up into the seats out of play, and it's now 3 and 2. It's a nice pitch there for Gavin Gidry to get back in this count. Last thing you want to do is issue a free pass here and go back to the top of the lineup. So Hunter, the pinch hitter. The payoff delivery, and he'll stay alive, fouling it back into the screen. There's an off-speed pitch there. You see how much confidence Wes Johnson has, and Gavin Gidry's off-speed. Runners take their lead, first and second with one out, top of the ninth. Tigers up 7-4, payoff pitch, yeah. called strike three. This time he gets on her, painted the outside corner. Gendry with two punch outs. 
He's fired up as he should be. Now he will quickly calm down, get back on the bump, top of the order. Braden Duhon to the plate. He's 0 for 4. Did reach on an error in the sixth, got aboard on a walk in the fourth inning. So Gidry, the freshman out of Lake Charles, taking on the Cowboys of McNeese with a chance to wrap it up in purple and gold with the Tigers leading seven to four here in the top of the ninth. First pitch to the left hander. Just missed inside. One and oh. The 1 0 delivery. Misses high. Two balls, no strikes. Hollins with a leadoff second. Hex with a big leadoff of first. The 2 0 pitch misses low from Gidry. Now 3 0. Pitch missed high and outside ball four. That's going to load the bases now. Brings up Peyton Harden, who's one for five tonight, and that's going to bring Jay Johnson out of the dugout. Hmm. And he wow. will make a change. Going to go to Thatcher Hurd. Two strikeouts and a walk there from Gidry. And they're going to stay with a right-hander to face this left-handed hitter. So another pitching change powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. LSU leading seven to four here on a Tuesday night. Bases loaded for McNeese. Two down, top of the ninth. Back after this, this is Fighting Tiger Baseball. Top of the ninth inning here at the box, 7 4. LSU leading by three. The Cowboys, though, have loaded the bases. Thatcher Hurd called upon out of the bullpen. He'll take over. He's charged with trying to find the third out and finish this game tonight for LSU to pick up their 40th win in regular season play. Trying to do so to pick up that 40 win mark in the regular season for the first time since 2015. The Tigers went 47 and 9. Yeah, Thatcher enters with a 7.07 ERA. He is 3 and 2 in 16 appearances. This will be his 17th, actually. He's made nine starts, 35 and two thirds innings of work. He's allowed 39 hits, 29 runs, 28 have been earned. He has 28 walks and 50 strikeouts. With the bases loaded, Peyton Harden at the plate. The pitch to the left hander, big swing and a miss. Well, 96 mile an hour heater. 
It's nothing and one to Harden again, who's one for five, had a base hit in the sixth inning. Couple of ground outs, couple of fly outs tonight. Hollins at third, Hext at second, Duhan at first. The 0 1 short of the plate, and it evens the count one ball, one strike. I'll tell you what Malazzo just did, it blocking up that or picking that 96 mile an hour fastball. Not easy. Two outs, bases loaded, the 1 1. Beautiful pitch across the plate. Breaking ball gets him ahead one and two. So Thatcher Hurd looks in two outs bases loaded the one two pitch ground ball to first Morgan going to glove it he will go to first step on the bag Tigers win Tigers win seven for the victory tonight here at the box to wrap up. The home regular season slate. The Tigers move to 40 and 12 on the season. They remain 17 and 9 in SEC play for McNeese. Good effort tonight for the Cowboys. They come up short 32 19 is their overall record. They remain 12 and 12 in Southland Conference play. Tigers travel tomorrow to Athens. It'll be Georgia and LSU Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from Foley Field. In Athens, Georgia. The Tigers win tonight, though. 7 to 4 is the final. Coming up later on, we'll have the Fighting Tiger 10th inning show presented by Woman's Hospital. We'll have your final game stats, play, player of the game, scores around the SEC, and a visit with head coach Jay Johnson. All done tonight. 7 4. LSU wins over McNeese. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball.